So, malnutrition. Um, it, it, it's probably the biggest problem that's faced in, developing, in the developing world. And yet, it's one that's kind of... It, it, it's, it, there are large organisations that deal with this, but it's kind of forgotten about. And within malnutrition, the micronutrient deficiencies play a really big role. Um, so, this was the goal where we wanted to develop a, a, a multiplex micronutrient assessment tool, we just called it MAT, um, to support the design and the evaluation of public health interventions aimed at addressing micronutrients. So what happens is, you'll go to a population, you'll just do a random sampling, you'll analyse those samples and you'll look at the vitamin A levels, the iron levels, and then you can see what the micronutrient, you know, what the levels are within the general population. If they're low, then you can go into those areas and you can do fortification programs to raise the levels of micronutrients within this population. Now once you've done that, you need to know if you've been successful or not. You need to go back in and re-measure and look at the general population and see if the levels of vitamin E and iron within those populations have increased. And to do this, ideally, given that we're talking about the developing world, there's not much money, there's not many skilled people, you need something that's easy to use. You need something that's very cost effective because it's not a lot of cash. And it needs to be effective for, you know, going out all over the place, collecting samples and be able to bring them back and do the testing. You're all familiar with this. We liked it because it was, you know, a low density uh, multiplexed array, small volume. This is a really big deal. So, the map. Reference-based lab tool. We're not talking about under the tree. We're talking about a standard reference lab where they have electricity, they have refrigeration, they have some skilled staff, um, they have storage space, uh, and so on. It fits with what's there, you need what? A plate washer, a plate shaker, a fridge. And that's about it, other than the Qplex reader. So, <clears throat> another thing that we really liked about Qantas was, they're the experts, they do this stuff, this is the bread and butter. So we don't, we have a wet lab in Seattle, we develop lots of things, but if we can turn around to someone who's got the skills and they can do it, we'd always much rather do that. And so, in working with Qantas, we basically said, here's a load of antibodies and antigens and some statins. <laughs> Make it work, please. Uh, and they did. I'm not going to show all the data around how well the assays work. I've shown here as an example as RBP. And as I said, it's a competitive report of assays. So at low concentrations, the fluorescence is really high. And then it, it, it comes down. But the thing to note is that the R values for all of the, the individual assays that are on this pooled array, they all have R values for around 0.99 or better. So they all work, but I don't want to show you essentially uh, the same plot over and over again. Uh, and so to summarise, well, in, in principle, one of the great things about this tool is that we're looking at biomarkers over a fairly broad range of concentrations and we've been able to demonstrate that we can go from the low nanogram range all the way up into mm -hmm. the milligrams per mil. Um, you know, as I showed you in that earlier slide, it's a third of the price of running five uh, independent monoplex ELISAs and then you add in the lab cost and everything else and also the failure rate and I think, uh, you know, doing ELISAs, if you mess up the standard, then you know, it goes wrong and that happens from time to time. And so the ease of use, you know, I think it helps prevent user error. It speeds up throughput. Uh, lab, laboratories like using the test. I think that's a really important factor. If lab folks don't like the test, then the, the quality of the data usually is uh, not as good or the laboratories are really unhappy. Um, we can put in a variety of different <laughs> specimen types that are used. We can put in serum, EBT-derived plasma, heparin-derived plasma. And you know, it's, it, it's, it, it's really fast. I mean, if you look to try to run five monoplex assays, you know, it's going to take a few days. Whereas the map, we can do it in around four hours as well. So it's nice, and of course, you know, we, we, can, we can batch plates, not just in one plate, waiting. We can run uh, multiple plates at one time.